But there is a Harvard economist that disagrees with that. He just took a million dollars out of Bank of America, and he said he's probably going to go ahead and create a bank run on Bank of America because of that. Now, this is a Burnham. He's an ardent critic of the Fed. He writes, why do I risk starting a run on Bank of America by withdrawing my money and presuming that many fellow depositors will read this and rush to withdraw too? Because they pay me zero interest. Now, Burnham explains that Bank of America may be unwilling or unable to return his money should one of a number of different circumstances arise, such as depositors demanding their money back en masse, or if the investments of which 90% of depositors' money Bank of America has loaned out to cover go bust. So, I mean, here's this guy. He's got a million dollars in the bank. And basically, it'd be better off if he just stuck that money in, under his bed in a mattress. Because when he goes to take it out, the bank will put these capital controls on it and say, I'm sorry, we need that to cover these risky investments that we made with your money that we pay you zero interest on. Silly American, what were you thinking? But in addition, he points out that the FDIC, which everyone feels so secure, you know, putting their money in the bank because they guarantee to insure deposits up to $250,000. He points out the FDIC only has about $41 billion in reserve against $6 trillion in insured deposits. So, I mean, you can do the math there. Now, this Harvard economist, he pins the blame on the government intervention and specifically Ben Bernanke and the Federal Reserve for pursuing absurd quantitative easing policies. He says it's going to unravel in the U.S. as it has every other time it has been tried from Weimar Germany to Robert Mugabe's Zimbabwe. Now, another elite insider also agrees with Burnham. He was one who predicted the massive economic crash in 2012. He says now that there's a very large probability that the real end of the world scenario might come March 4th, 2014. He says the doomsday clock will ring then because the U.S. economy may fully crash around that date, which will in turn bring down all world economies and all hope of any recovery for the foreseeable future. Now, he predicts that interest rates will skyrocket, businesses will fail, unemployment will go to record levels, of course, material and food shortages, and major social unrest. Now, he goes on to say that any wishful thinking that America is in a recovery and that things are getting better is an illusion because a run on the bank would start suddenly, but it would snowball, build very quickly, and the rest of the world would fully crash along with us. Now, this collapse is also noted by the U.S. Treasury Department, who agrees, and they say that if the U.S. government doesn't raise the debt ceiling— it's going to have a generational effect, meaning that a depressive economic environment could last for our entire lifetimes, which is very frightening. Now, who knows if it's going to happen around March 4th or whenever, but all I can say is that there are some major economists and the U.S. Treasury, I don't really believe anything they say, but some other major economists are saying we need to be prepared for this. Something is happening. And if Burnham's words don't send a chill down your spine, they definitely should send a chill through the markets. We have seen the Dow Jones fall a thousand points. And this has been since the, its height in December, which we haven't seen it fall more than 200 points uh, in over a year. I mean, that's its moving average. So many believe that this is just the beginning of a major stock decline. Now, Peter Schiff says the crisis is imminent. I don't think Obama is going to finish his second term without the bottom dropping out. A stock market, there, the investors there are oblivious to these problems, and the global financial markets are also becoming extremely unstable. Now, for anyone who doesn't believe that we could see civil unrest here in America, like what these economists are talking about, just take a look at what happened in Seattle. People there were lighting things on fire, burning historical buildings, damaging buildings, throwing down street signs, going crazy because their team won the Super Bowl. I mean, they were acting crazy because of good news. Now, imagine what they would do, how the average American would behave if there was a total economic collapse and no one could find any jobs or any income for an extended period of time. So that's, I mean, that's how you can imagine some civil unrest. And then, of course, just wait till the financial reality of the Affordable Care Act sets in. And then once the employer mandate kicks in, I mean, we've had a year, they've had a year of kind of saving grace for that. 
But Obamacare actually gives business owners incentive to cut hours and turn full-time workers into part-time workers. And we've already seen evidence of that happening, people's jobs turning into part-time jobs. And then for other people out there who are already unemployed, it really does not make sense for them to go and get a job because there are so many uh, government subsidies that they can go out and get that it doesn't make sense for them to go get a minimum wage job or some crappy job when they can just get free stuff from the government. It actually is free health care when you don't have a job, which of course, you know, we used to call that Medicaid, but I don't think that it got enough tax revenue. But obviously our government cannot sustain that many people living off of it and needing it to be their everything and their all. So I don't know why they are trying to create that course without our economy producing anything. So it really, it's going to be a bizarre scenario. Just look at Spain, where 4.8 million people there are without a job. The suicide rates there are the highest they have been in eight years. So we can expect to see those sudden suicide rates climbing here in the U.S. as well, as it's predicted that two and a half million more Americans are going to be without a job in the coming decade, thanks to Obamacare. So do you think that Obama really cares about those climbing suicide rates? Uh, that suicide has emerged as the leading cause of death amongst young men in Spain because their um, unemployment average is about 57%. No, he doesn't care about that. And in fact, his stocks will probably go up because he's helping the globalists with their depopulation agenda. So this crash is happening all around us. They're just hoping to convince you to stay on their government health care and eat their GMOs and maybe you'll just off yourself at some point. They really don't care. They really do not care about you. And hopefully in the meantime, you'll just stay distracted with their mass distraction games. This week, it's going to be the Olympics. Last week, it was the Super Bowl and all the weeks and months leading up to the Super Bowl. Alex Jones here with a very important announcement for truth seekers. We've carried a lot of amazing films and books over the years on the online video bookstore at Infowars.com. And out of all the titles we've carried, one stands out because it is just so chillingly convincing. And that's Dreams from My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, available at Infowars.com. This film exposes the fraud that Obama is like nothing I've seen. If you want to know who Obama's real daddy is, this is the film for you. Don't forget, your purchase supports our broadcast and our growing media network. You'll also find at InfoWarshop.com, None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, the book that woke me up. We're also carrying Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. This book is coffin nails to the globalist takeover. The Greater Good, the most professional and up-to-date film I've ever seen exposing the scourge that is vaccines. These titles and a lot more are all available at InfoWarsShop.com.